Hello friends, my name is Arwen. Welcome to online programming from the Durham County Library. I am so pleased you could be with me today because I'm about to do a science experiment and it is super cool. Why is it super cool? Other than the fact that it's a science experiment and all science experiments are super cool, this experiment is going to teach us about color. And color is a thing that we learn about in art. And so we're gonna learn a little bit about art and a little bit about science all together in one experiment. So fun. So we're gonna start with the color part. We have all had the experience, I am sure, of painting or coloring or drawing with markers and you don't have the color you need. So what do you do? Chances are you mix together some other colors to try to make the color that you needed. Did it work? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it does not work at all. We have all had that problem. So let's talk a little bit about the colors that we mix together to make other colors. This is something called a color wheel. And color wheels can be much more complicated than this. This is a very simple one. So let's talk about these colors. If you don't have orange, what do you do? You mix together yellow and red, right? And if you don't have green, what do you do? Well, chances are you're gonna to mix together yellow and blue and get a lovely green. What about purple? I find that that's one that, that uh, definitely confuses some people because it's not immediately obvious that you mix together red and blue to make purple. So those are colors that we've made by mixing other colors together but red and yellow and blue are very special colors. We call them primary colors because you don't mix anything together to make them. They just exist on their own. And even cooler, every color in the whole world, every color is made of some combination of yellow, blue, and red. So now we know what goes into mixing colors but what if you want to unmix a color? I mean, you can't go in and pull out all the red paint once you've mixed it with blue paint. It's all purple paint now. So how can you separate it out to see what makes up certain colors? Well, more than a hundred years ago, really far away in Russia, there was a scientist who was thinking about that. He thought there must be some way to use science to find out what makes up certain colors without knowing beforehand. And he came up with a method called chromatography. Let's try that one more time slower. What do you think? Chromatography. It's one word made of two words that mean color writing. Chroma, color, tography, writing. And that comes from Greek. I don't know if it's modern Greek or ancient Greek but I know it's from Greek. So I decided that instead of using colors that we know how to mix them, you know, we know that blue and yellow make green, so using green ink wouldn't be very interesting. I got together a, com a whole assortment of black pens and markers because this is very interesting. Not all black ink is the same. Everyone makes their black ink in a slightly different way. So I wanted to see how these black inks look different from each other when we separated out the colors that make them. To do this, I took pieces of paper towel because paper towel is very absorbent. The whole reason that paper towels exist is to soak things up. And so it's going to soak up the water that I have in these containers very efficiently. And on each piece of paper towel, I put a line of black using the different inks. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our pieces of paper towel with the black ink on them into the containers of water. I eat lots of yogurt and save up all the containers because they're so good for science experiments. <laughs> now, as some of you may know, if you joined me for uh, the last science experiment that I did, we learned about capillary action, which is when the water moves up the paper and what the scientist in Russia knew about capillary action is that the water 
picks up things as it passes through the paper. So, um, and since the water picks up different things as it passes through the paper, it's gonna separate them out. But why would the different colors be separated? They're all colors. Why wouldn't they just stay mixed together? This is something neat that I learned. Pigment, which is another word for color, the pigments have different weights, meaning the red pigment is a different weight from the yellow pigment, and the yellow pigment is a different weight from the blue pigment. And so when the water passes through the black ink and separates out the pigments, it's because of the different weights. So some of the pigments will move faster with the water because they don't weigh as much, whereas some of the pigments will stay pretty close to the original ink because they weigh more. Think about if you are at a river and you throw three things into the river. You throw in a rubber ducky, you throw in a block of wood, and you throw in a rock. The rubber ducky is gonna go the farthest, the fastest, because it's so lightweight. And the block of wood is gonna go, uh, it's gonna go, but it's not gonna go as fast as the rubber ducky because it weighs more. And the rock, the rock is going to sink because the rocks do not float. So that is basically what's happening. The different pigments are different weights, and so they're traveling in the water at different speeds. Should we look at our experiment? I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and then come back and turn it back on in a few minutes and we'll see what happened. Okay, it's been about five minutes and we're gonna see what happened with our different inks and what colors they are made of. Let's look at this first one. Let's see. That one, well, I can see a little bit of blue in it, so there's definitely some blue in that ink, but it mostly just looks like plain black. So those colors didn't separate out very well. This one's neat. This one definitely separated out. This black ink is now purple and blue. It's separated into purple and blue, which means that we know that there is blue and red in this because of the purple that it made. That's really pretty. Now this one, this one reminds me of the first time I tried to do this experiment. It didn't separate at all. Now the first time I tried to do this experiment, I used permanent markers. Not realizing that permanent markers aren't going to change with water because they're not water soluble, meaning that the water will not break them down. They're specifically made to be that way so you can't wipe them off. And so I just ended up after two days of letting them soak with all these plain black lines before I finally realized that I can't use permanent marker in this experiment because permanent marker is made to not come apart in water. So let's go on to some that is not permanent. This one is so lovely. I love that how it's blue and kind of greenish and you can see the yellow at the very top. So there must be yellow in this ink. Wow. That's my favorite one so far. Now, this one is the most vibrant as far as how the ink has um, separated and changed. Look at that. That is a bright green, which means it's blue and yellow. And then at the bottom, can you see that there's red in there as well? That is so neat. So we know that there's, there's green, that means that there's blue and yellow, and then there's red at the bottom. So we've seen all the primary colors in our science experiment. And how neat that all these inks that are just all black ink, when you write with them, they mostly look exactly the same, but then when you separate them out using chromatography, you can see all the different colors that go into black ink, unless you're using permanent marker. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little project today and learn something about color and something about science, and we'll get to explain it to someone else one day. Have a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, night. I don't know what time you're watching this, and I look forward to doing more experiments with you in the future. Bye!